What's up, sons? It's Blind Ryan with Son of Attack once again, and today we are going to take a look at some more delitting. This time we're going to be taking a look at the Skylake CPU, the 6700K. As Cabby Lake has just come out and has proved to be very, very hot, I've been practicing my delitting, and Skylake is actually pretty hot in its own right. So we're going to take a look at why, we're going to see what we can do about it, which is delitting, and we're going to see what kind of performance benefits we get out of it after it's been completed, so stick around. Alrighty, so I have my 6700K in a Cooler Master XP Evo case. This is now the new test bench, so my test bench is actually going to have a delitted, overclocked 6700K, which is pretty cool. I'm pretty stoked about that. But what we had to do first to get this started is we had to remove the cooler. So the cooler we're using here, guys, is actually going to be the Hyper 212, which I mean is pretty much the go-to for most people in that kind of budget air cooler range to get a small slight overclock. But I'm here to tell you guys that with Skylake, we can actually get up to 4.9 gigahertz on air and not even worry about temperatures. How do we do that? Well, it's a process called delitting, like I've mentioned before. And what we're essentially gonna do is remove the IHS, which is the integrated heat sink. And then we're gonna replace the thermal paste that comes factory with a liquid metal. Now there are some caveats and some things you need to pay attention to here, so I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the tools I used and the actual liquid I used and so on and so forth. So to get things started, after we've removed that cooler, we're gonna remove the CPU and then we're gonna break out what is known as the Rocket 88 D-Lid Kit. And you can purchase this on their website and I'll leave a link in the comment section below. Essentially, you place the CPU into the kind of crevice with the arrow matching up and then you place the lid on top you put the three included screws in there and you just hand tighten them and then you use the allen wrench that's also provided in the kit to crank down the screw on the outside and you'll hear a loud or mild to loud pop and once that's happened you will unscrew that take the lid back off and you will have a successfully delitted CPU. Things to note here is you want to be very careful at this point to not scratch the PCB, which is kind of a challenge because you need to remove that I, uh, the IHS glue because that glue does keep that IHS above the die a little bit too much and you want to get as close as you can to that as possible. I did this by using a, di a couple different methods, mainly my fingernail, so I wouldn't damage the PCB, and then some alcohol and a microfiber cloth to kind of clean it up the rest of the way. Once that's cleaned up, you also want to clean off the thermal paste, leftover thermal paste that's on the die, and then you need to go over to your IHS, flip it over, and clean not only the IHS glue from around the edges, but also clean off the thermal paste from the IHS itself. And once you've done that, if you get the Coolibratory kit, which you can actually get on Amazon, and I'll leave a link in the description below as well, it comes with a kind of SOS pad looking deal, which is going to be used to kind of smooth out the surfaces. So you're gonna to wanna to use this on the back of the IHS, actually both sides of the IHS because I'll go over that here in a second. And then you're gonna to wanna to use it on the die. Now, there's this kind of thing called cross hatching. If you guys are familiar with like any kind of machine work, um, you always wanna make sure that you have a good cross hatch. Like in a cylinder, when you're kind of put, replacing the pistons, you'll, you'll look for after honing the cylinders that, and make sure that there's a good cross hatch pattern. So that means that not only do you wanna go up and down on the die, but you wanna go back and forth. And a cross hatch basically just may, means that you have kind of like a tic-tac-toe board on the die. So once you've done that, you can go ahead and start applying the liquid alloy metal. A couple notes about this is that it is conductive. So since we're dealing with a conductive material, we don't want any of it on the PCB. To prevent this, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and grab some scotch tape. And I just leave it in the actual um, Rocket 88 kit and then just place the scotch tape around the die 
to block off any of that liquid alloy from touching the PCB. You also want to do this as best as you can, and it can be kind of difficult, but you also want to do this on the IHS because you don't want any of it being on the outside of where that die is and potentially dripping onto the PCB because then you're going to have issues again. Those are the two very important things. If you aren't into that and you're kind of, that makes you nervous, you do have the option of just going ahead and replacing that thermal paste with a better thermal paste. I recommend the G-Lid GC Extreme and that's totally up to you. If you guys would prefer having something safer, that's cool. I want to go as far as I can. So all these results are with the Coolibratory liquid alloy metal solution. So once you've done that, you kind of want to apply it with the provided brush. You want to make sure there's no bubbles because if there's bubbles, you're going to have hot spots on the die and then you're going to have issues. So make sure that when you spread it out that it's decently thin, but not too thin. And you're going to want to place it on both sides, the IHS and the die, and you're going to make sure that you smooth all of the bubbles out. Once you've done that, there's actually a relid kit that I'll also link in the description below included that you can purchase as well. And it works really well with Skylake and it works really well with Cabby Lake because it matches this, the IHS perfectly. Now some of the older ones, I had issues with Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge with the actual relid kit as it didn't really match up properly. The little fins on the outside of the IHS were kind of uh, blocking that from staying on it steady. But in this case, you can just place that over the actual PCB and die, and then you can place the lid over and it will match it up perfectly so you don't have to worry about sliding it around. You also want to be very careful that you don't slide it around because if you are relitting this without a relid kit and you slide that liquid around, not only are you going to get some of that liquid in places where you don't want it on the top of the IHS where it could potentially drop down onto the PCB later, but you're going to also have the chance of creating air pockets once again which I clarified is one of the things we use the brush for to make sure that we don't have any air pockets. So if it does slide around, don't freak out, but you're definitely going to want to pull it back off and you're going to make sure that you didn't have any issues there. The next step is to kind of make sure that you can keep the IHS on there. There's a few different methods. Now I had issues using super glue or a thin super glue, crazy glue in the past. I did, however, go ahead and do it again on the on the Skylake. I know I shouldn't have, but I felt like I was confident enough that I could do it and I'll be okay. The reason why it's better than using like a an epoxy or something like that is that it or a gel is that it keeps the tolerances much closer, which means you're a lot closer but between the IHS and the actual dye itself than if you use another solution. So that's the theory behind using a thinner super glue. Now some of the time what will happen and even happened again to me on the Skylake is that a little bit dropped onto the bottom with the pins where the pins are. So I had to use some nail polish remover to remove that from the pins after the fact and we booted up just fine. And as you guys can see here, we're gonna talk about temperatures in just a tad. Now, I mentioned using that same kind of SOS pad looking thing to create a cross hatching on the top of the IHS. And you also wanna do that with your cooler. So on the Hyper 212, you can go ahead and flip that around and create the cross hatching on that. And then I used the thermal paste I used was the Gila GC Extreme. In this case, and I had used it in the pre uh, the pre D lid numbers here as well. So the pre the pre D lid overclock for this CPU that I had was at 1.45 volts, and it was at 4.6 gigahertz. With that, with those settings, we had a package max temp of 95 degrees Celsius during IDA 64 with FPU stress testing and that was for five minutes. And then our Cinebench score was a cool 914, which isn't that great. I've seen better, uh, even not delidded 6700Ks, but that's what we were at. So after the delid and everything, the process that we just went to, and this is still at 1.45 volts at 4.6 uh, gigahertz, 
we had a whopping drop of 30 degrees Celsius in Ida 64 with FPU for five minutes. And we went down on the total package from 95 degrees Celsius to 65 degrees Celsius. What makes this even more impressive is that our Cinebench score with nothing else other than the D-Lid and putting it in went from 914 to 1012. That's almost 100 points just from the D-Lid. So when people ask if it's worth it and they say, you're crazy, man, don't do it, you could F it up, the benefits are there. So it's up to you, but I have proof here that for Skylake, it's definitely worth it. Now, because we were able to do that, we were also eventually, because we were able to drop the temperatures so drastically, we were able to increase the voltage now at this point, which means we could go up to the board maximum of 1.55 volts and we could start cranking the overclock. So the max overclock before the D-Lid for me was always, it would get unstable at 4.6 gigahertz. After the D-Lid, I was able to get up to an awesome 4.9 gigahertz, and that was at 1.52 volts on the final settings. With this, we went up two degrees Celsius on the total package from 65 degrees Celsius to 67 degrees Celsius, so we're perfectly fine within the temp limit. And then our Cinnabent score went up from 1,012 to 1,070, which is knocking on some of the extreme processor Cinebench scores, for example, the 3930K. Pretty awesome stuff here. So to get those overclocks, I do want to mention a couple things. If you guys aren't familiar with overclocking itself, the two things that you want to take a look at for the most part is going to be your CPU voltage, your VCC, and then you're going to want to take a look at your multiplier. Now, sometimes you can get a little higher with the block if you're trying to push super hard. But for this case, I would just say use the multiplier. And in this case, we had a multiplier of 49 and the block clock of 100. And then we had the VCC at 1.52 volts. Now, another couple notes here is that you want to go ahead and adjust your load line calibration, line load calibration, and turn that on. Different motherboard manufacturers support this in different ways. It looks different depending on who it is. But for MSI, like in this case, it was pretty much essentially just mode one. And then once that was done, we're good to go. It'll keep that voltage up high and consistent for the CPU so we don't have any instability issues. Once all was said and done, I did go ahead and bump down to 4.8 gigahertz because after about 20 minutes in IDA 64 with FPU on, I did have a couple issues. It didn't crash. The test just said that it detected a hardware failure and stopped. So I went ahead and just bumped it down to 4.8 gigahertz. We bumped the voltage down to 1.49 volts and we went ahead and ran 20 minutes in Ida 64 and our Cinebench went down from 1070 to about 1060 or 1059. So not too bad of a loss. We're 24 at seven stable. We have temperatures of 65 degrees Celsius, way below what is specced out for here. So I'm confident that we've not only increased our overclock and our performance, but we've also increased our longevity and, and the life of the chip itself because we decreased temperatures so much. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. Is d something you're interested in for Skylake or Cabby Lake? Is that something you might try at some point? And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you next Tuesday.